If we want to turn our world upside down and do something impossible in this world, Jehovah, Jehovah Sabo said we can do it. We're trusting in him. And that's more than just rhetoric. It's more than just preaching. It's, it's walking it out. It's making a decision today. I'm going to do something different because I know that Jehovah Sabo is going to empower me to do it. But it's not going to be like hocus pocus, poof, you know, this happened. It's because you started walking out in faith, hearing the Lord and doing it. That's how it's going to happen. Start living out your dream. I mean, I think about things like, uh, oh, let's pick Noah, for instance. I, man, I just love to have gone to the first church of Noah. Wouldn't you have? I don't know. It depends, uh, you know, if you would have or not, depending on where you're at when the water came. You know what I'm saying? Huh? And here's this guy. He's building this huge boat, and it's never even rained. And this guy's walking out the dream that God gave him, and it hadn't even rained. And he's warning the people, you got to get right with God, get on the boat or, you know, he's walking it out. He's sawing boards. He's nailing them together, right? That's walking it out. Walking out the dream. Knowing that Jehovah Sabaoth is going to make it happen. I'll tell you what, when the rain came and the doors closed, there were a lot of believers. But they all drowned. It was time when it was too late. Jehovah Sabaoth, when we face the impossible odds, okay, 1 Samuel chapter 17, you know the story. Uh, I just want to bring the fact that Jehovah Sabaoth is in this story. You know the story of David and Goliath. You know, Goliath is the big dude. He's nine foot six inches tall. I mean, he's huge. This guy, now, now this is the epitome of the worldly thinking versus the godly thinking. Can't you imagine that story? Let's pretend you don't know it. You're, you're living it out. You're in that valley, and on the one side, you have the Philistine army, and on the other side, you have the Israelite army, okay? Pick whatever side you're on at that time, but you're there. And the big dude comes out and says, you punks, you're God, he isn't anything. You're all a bunch of dogs. And he goes on with a bunch of other, you know, insults to the nation of Israel, but not only insulting Israel, he's insulting Yahweh, and this is Yahweh's army here. And they're all sitting there going, because the big dude is there. There's nobody close to him. This is a seasoned warrior. This is like the Mike Spinks. Uh, oh, no, that's, that's the way it, it's Leon Spinks and Mike uh, somebody else. <laughs> Mike Tyson. I got my boxers. They just like, wait, <laughs> went crosswise. I mean, pick the biggest dude you can think of. Who's the biggest, baddest dude today? I mean, besides E.K. <laughs> you know, I mean, who? well, E.K., whoever. I mean, we think, you know, and it, 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 try put E.K. E.K., come on up here, man. We're going to go at it right up here. You know, who, you guys, E.K. is going to kill you, Hawkins, you know. And, uh, you know, I mean, look at that. If we're sitting, we don't know the rest of the story, and, and we're worldly-minded, and we're thinking, yeah, the big dude, man, he's going to squash it. Look at that little kid. Look at him. He's even the smallest in his family. Yeah, he, he's just a little red-headed runt. And, and he doesn't even have any armor on. And he doesn't have a sword. He doesn't have a spear. He doesn't have a shield. And come on, let's get honest with ourselves. This is the epitome of worldly thinking. This guy's going to get crushed. David, I love the fact that when he... All this is going on, you know. He comes in to help his brothers, and he's bringing some chow for him. And he, he's listening to this dude. And this makes David mad. He doesn't see him. He never once calls him a giant. He never once calls him a big guy. He never once recognized him physically. The only thing the text tells us is that David heard him insult his God. And he's looking around. Isn't somebody going to do something about this guy? This guy's blaspheming our God. What are you guys doing over here? And he's knocking. And I love what David said when the, when the big guy says, who are you, you little dog coming at me with sticks and stones, you little punk? And uh, he said, you know, the big guy's telling him, I'm going I'm to cut your head off. You know what David says? You write this one down. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin. But I come against you in the name, look at this. Tell me how much more practical this can get. 
I come against you in the name of Jehovah Sabaoth, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you've defied. And it goes on to say, and today I will cut off your head and I will feed your body to the birds of the air. And the text says that David run up to the giant. He ran to him. He ran to the battle line. He had this sling, you know, and the stone. Don't underestimate that. Even in the east to this day, that is the high-powered rifle of the Middle East. These guys, I mean, this thing go through a block of wood from 50 paces, buddy. And David, he had five smooth stones in his pocket. He took one out. He ran to the battle line. He gave it a whirl and boom, hit that giant in the middle of his head and he went straight on down. And he did. And he cut his head off that day and he was victorious. He inspired the rest of the army. They finally got into the scene and they won the battle. Because David really believed what he believed was real. And he said, I even had past experiences. He's talking to King Saul, the big wimp. He was a king. He was one of, King Saul is representative of all worldly religion. You understand that? King Saul was the guy biggest in the army of Israel. He was the leader. He was their king. Who should have gone and battled that big dude? Should have been King Saul. This little guy comes up and says, yeah, don't worry about it, king. I'll go kick his butt for you. I'll do it. King Saul's like, you can't do it. And Dave says, yes, I can. You know, I'm out in the field and here comes a bear and I took him by the hair and I, and the Lord gave me victory over the bear. He gave me victory over the lion. He'll give me victory over this punk Philistine. I mean, that's, that's the wording he used, Tom's loose translation. He said he would. And listen to what King Saul says. Okay. Go ahead. Lord be with you. Lord be with you. I just want to slap him. You know, I can't wait if I ever get a chance. I'm just saying that because I know I never will. Saul was a big dude, man. He kicked my butt. But uh, anyhow, that is religious talk. You hear that? Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I mean, it's all talk. There's too many people in church who are all about talk and not the walk. They don't believe Jehovah Sabaoth is real. It makes a real difference in their life that he can empower them to do the impossible, go against impossible odds. They're more like Saul sitting back. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord be with you. Saul is false religion. He's worldly religion. David is the kind of spirit that we need to transform not only our own lives, but our community of faith and our community here. That's the kind of spirit I want. I got to tell you uh, a, a story about a guy by the name of uh, John G. Patton. Anybody know John G. Patton? I'd be really surprised if anybody did. Missionary to the Pacific Islands. And, uh, in, in, and he was uh, in Melanesia in the 18th century. And he was one of the first white people to ever go into that area, and he was ministering amongst those people, resistance rose to their ministry, and warriors uh, had decided they were going to go and kill John G. Patton and all of his family. And they came that night, and John knew they were coming. And he got all of his family together in their hut, got on their knees, and prayed mightily to Jehovah Sabaoth. And they waited. And they waited. But they never came. John continued ministering in that island to eventually he, he converted some of the major chiefs in that area. They became faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. And it was years later that he asked that one chief, he said, you guys were going to come and wipe us out that night, but you never came I've got to know why. And the chief said, because we were afraid of your warriors that were there with you. He said, I didn't have any warriors. I didn't have any guards. He said, oh yeah, we didn't come to your hut and attack you because around your hut were the tall warriors with swords. Do you believe do you really believe what you believe is really real? 